Hi guys, Zator here, and today I'm going to be going over how I mixed and mastered my new track uh, through the Burning Gate. This is just the mastering portion. I will have the mixing portion in a separate video to hopefully keep the video length down. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, the first thing in my mastering chain is this uh, Red 2 EQ. All it is doing is actually just uh, attenuating the low end, uh, dropping it down uh, just a couple of dB, really not that much. Uh, as you can see here, the high pass comes all the way up to about 100 hertz. And I'm also uh, automating the uh, mix knob so it is active in the initial parts of the song where there's this first initial impact and then throughout uh, the build up. So uh, into the chorus, it uh, the bass will hit harder when the uh, low pass is turned off. Um, it's not very obvious, especially since it's hard to tell when the automation really comes in. Really not a lot going on uh, there. Uh, really, it's just an effect mostly for the buildup, not using it in very many other places. Uh, the next plugin that we have here is a Tesla SE. It's a saturation plugin. I'm using it very, very lightly. In fact, it's almost not noticeable in most of the time. But I really liked what it did with the high end. And since it's so subtle, it just kind of fits in with the rest of the track. I'll go ahead and toggle it for you so you can hear exactly how it sounds. You only really get it in the really high high end on the on the trumpets there. That's where I notice it the most. Uh, but like I said, it's pretty subtle. Um, uh, the next plugin that we have is Thrill Seeker XTC Blue. This is sort of an EQ, sort of a sonic exciter. Um, it does a good job of uh, adding a little bit of drive, a little bit of saturation, just like Tesla. Uh, but it's also functioning as a sort of parametric EQ. You can see that we have a, a couple of options here. But really, I'm going light with it. Uh, low boost around uh, 200 hertz. Uh, mid boost around a little bit less than 1500 hertz. More like 1200 hertz. Maybe even a little bit higher than that. Um, and a, another slight boost on the high end above, um, above about 4000 hertz. Um, from there, it goes into a little bit of drive, like really light drive. Uh, Mojo is an analog emulation, but I leave that off because I didn't really think it fit. Um, and output's just uh, whatever it was set to. And I'll go ahead and toggle that in AB so you can hear it. That has most, uh, the most effect, I think, on the low end. That's where it was a little bit more pronounced. It, the impacts come through just a little bit better with this turned on. Um, it really, it's, uh, again, pretty subtle. As you can see, I'm only using pretty low levels. Um, didn't really want it to destroy the mix, so a little bit of subtlety goes a long way in this case. When I actually start getting into the more intensive mastering plugins here, uh, Boot EQ is one of my favorites. Um, High frequency boost, um, plus four. Not exactly sure what values those are uh, when it comes to Q and high frequency, like where, where it's shelving off. But really, I just set it to where I think it sounds the best. Um, but then with the uh, mid and low frequencies, we, we do get the option of adjusting uh, where it sits in the frequency range. A little bit of a boost in the high mids, above five kilohertz, just a little bit, uh, adds to the sharpness a little bit more pronounced high end uh, really goes a long way especially with those trumpets um, i'm cutting just a little bit about out of the mid frequency uh, about 750 hertz uh, tried to prevent most of the mud um, and in the low frequency i'm dropping it back just a little bit around 110 again to help clear up the mud uh, tube emulation is on with some extra drive i really like the tube emulation tube emulation in this software I'm um, also boosting some of the low frequency here as well. 
um, and not messing with the output. And I'll go ahead and toggle that in AB so you can see how it sounds. As you can see, huge, huge difference. It's a lot more bright and a lot more powerful, in my opinion. That's also due to loudness biasing. It is a louder sound with, with the EQ turned on. Um, but still, you can definitely hear that it is brighter and has a huge impact on the high end. Uh, that, gets, uh, that gets thrown into my uh, Density Mark III uh, compressor. Uh, I have the drive about midway and the range uh, limited, so it doesn't really go beyond uh, eight decibels of compression, which is pretty heavy. Uh, but most of the time it doesn't hit that. Mostly it's just with the heavy impacts. Um, I have a more relaxed timing on here. It's uh, 13 milliseconds by 1200 millisecond release. Uh, I have it relaxed off a little bit. Um, and I'm using the color knob, which gives it a more warm sound. Uh, uh, that's how I would describe it. Um, really, I think it's just a little bit of a change in how it handles the mid frequency. That's what it sounds like. I'll go ahead and AB that for you so you can get a good idea. Really love how the mid frequency comes through when it was. Uh, with, with using this compressor. Um, I'll go ahead and leave it up while it's playing so you can see some of the levels being changed here. Uh, one thing you may notice is I have the link completely turned off. I wanted the left and right channels to be completely in independently compressed. Even if they are being hit by the same compressor, I wanted them to be handled uh, based on their own level. And I really think that that helped with the stereo image quite a lot. Uh, from there, it's going into a parametric EQ where I'm just shaping the sound to what I want. A boost in the really low frequencies, which helps with the sub, which comes from the, uh, the bass here. Right around there. And then a cut at 100 hertz uh, really helps clear up some of the mud that's caused by the submixing with some of the other impacts, which are pretty bass heavy. Uh, really does a good job of cleaning that up. And a small boost on the high end. Uh, again, just to brighten it up a little bit. Um, and if you notice, I do have the volume turned down quite a bit. Um, that was just so I could get a better level going into the, uh, into the final compressor here. I really could have left it and just attenuated the volume in the compressor, but I found that it was easier just to have it turned down in the EQ before it. But really, I am not doing a lot in this compressor. It's very, very light the whole way through. Uh, fairly high ratio, uh, sometimes around negative 6. See, negative 6 to negative 9 dB. Um, really not doing a lot. Low ratio. Um, really, this was just to glue everything together and uh, make it sound pretty awesome. And I'll go ahead and uh, AB that for you. Now, one thing you will notice when I change that is the huge difference in stereo separation. Uh, the separation knobs were set to uh, mono some of the low end uh, to keep the bass centered which really, really helps get rid of the, some of the mud I was talking about. Keeping your bass mono is awesome. Um, with, but with a mid and high, you can get away with uh, widening the stereo image quite a bit. And you can see I do that here uh, with the high quite a lot, which makes the, it makes the stereo image just huge. And you can hear it just by toggling it. Um, again, with the, the master, I'm also doing that. Um, there was a little bit of stereo bass, especially with some of the impacts, so I didn't full mono it, but I did, did try and bring it more towards center, and especially since the sub bass from uh, the dubstep bass sound is already monoed, it wasn't as big of a deal. Uh, finally, that goes into just a limiter, but I'm not actually doing anything with it. 
It's just to catch any peaks. It's all it's for. And that's basically the mastering uh, chain. Uh, most of these plugins are free. Uh, Tesla is free. Thrill Secure, Boot, EQ, and Density are all free plugins. Would strongly recommend you pick those up. Uh, anyways, if you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great day.